Hello, this is a special update. Um, I, this is a um, discussion of sewer rates and social justice, and yes, those two do have a lot to do with each other, and more importantly, this is a call to action for citizens who um, feel that it's their obligation to be involved and um, fix some things that I don't think are right. Let's first of all talk about the status quo. Let's talk about what's going on right now. Um, we made a decision to expand the wastewater treatment plant. Now let's back into that, um, how we arrived at that decision. Industrial wastewater output is flat. Commercial wastewater output is flat. Residential wastewater output is declining. And yet we made a um, decision to expand. Why did we make that decision? Because we understood there was going to be a lot of growth in the community. And if done correctly, that, that's a good thing. Um, the cost of the expansion portion of the debt that was issued is approximately $60 million. Um, Here's what I don't like. Of that $60 million, one-third of that um, is being um, paid for by developers and a, a $2,500 uh, $2, per residential and um, similar for um, commercial the, um, plant investment fee structure, which covers approximately $20 million. Two-thirds of this project, which was done exclusively for the benefit of development, is being um, paid for by your sewer rates. That's right, your sewer rates, the ones that we have massively increased for the last few years, um, ridiculous rates of increase is being done so that we can subsidize development. Um, I've got a huge issue with this and I think that you would too. Um, let, let's dig into the details a little bit more. Um, the way that we charge our um, sewer rates, we know that somebody um, in the long run, somebody who lives on a small lot, um, costs much less in terms of um, maintenance of the um, system that someone lives on a large lot, but we don't, um, our rates don't, don't reflect that. And the net result is, is that we end up, um, our poor pay a disproportionate amount um, of this fee than do our wealthiest citizens. And I've got a huge problem with that as well, and I think you will too. Um, now I could sit here and, um, you know, I, I could sit here and complain about the system. The reality is, is the next few years we're going to have to raise sewer rates anyways because the uh, bond covenants that we have on the debt that we issue are going to force us to do so. That's just the unfortunate reality, but that doesn't mean we can't start acting responsibly today, and that's, that's what this video is all about. Um, rather than just complaining, and don't get me wrong, I do like to just complain, but I'm actually going to propose a um, completely different policy than what's being proposed right now, and um, I'm going to need your support to make it happen. Um, four, four points to my plan. First and foremost, instead of having a flat per unit rate for everyone in the city, we're going to um, break it into three tiers. People who live on average size lots, smaller than average size lots, and larger than average size lots. Um, we know that the larger the lot you live on, in general, the more expensive the um, cost of maintenance. As such, I'm going to propose a um, reduced fees for people who live on the smallest lots, that would be like people who live in the Kutsky Park neighborhood, and um, higher fees for the, those people who live in the um, more sprawled out areas, um, like Scenic Oaks, for example. Um, why is this good for everybody? Well, actually, if we take out the developer subsidies, everybody, whether you're on a small lot or a large lot, in the long run, are going to end up paying a lot less. Um, Second point, um, in the future we're going to be asked to build some and maintain and operate some very expensive lift stations so that we can continue our um, never-ending sprawl. Um, we need to make sure that when that goes into a place, special districts are set up so that the, um, the sewer, the wastewater fees in those particular areas are higher so as to cover the operating cost. It's um, absolutely ridiculous, even though we've been doing it forever, to ask the citizens of Kutsky Park or East Side or Slatterly to subsidize the sprawl on the far northwest side of the city. Um, got a huge issue with that, and, um, and you, can, you can help to make the change. Third thing, and this is probably the most important and the thing that just really disgusts me, we absolutely positively have a moral obligation to eliminate this $5,000 per lot subsidy. The reality is, is if the, if the um, cost of development is $7,500 per, um, per lot, um, that's what that's what the fee should be. I have a huge problem with them instead charging them twenty five hundred and then asking the um, asking some of the poorest in our community to pick up the difference. Um, I you know and I I don't think we've been talking about this. I think it's something that we should talk about. Um, finally, my fourth point. Now development there is benefits to everybody, but um, the reality is is when we have the kind of sprawl that's been going on now in many parts of our city. Um, it hurts us in the long run. We know that we're going to have higher expenses for um, 
fire protection, police coverage, public works infrastructure. We're going to need more parking downtown because people aren't close to transit. We're going to need more roads everywhere because people can only drive to get where they're going. Um, this is an opportunity to take what would otherwise be a big hit against development and um, actually guide them in the right direction. Not a lot of people realize the um, paternal nature of our state means that we can't actually set um, building codes that are um, more appropriate, more responsible than what the, um, some of the LAC, LAC standards that the state has set. So instead, um, we're going to use the $7,500, and um, if the developer is willing to do a quality development with quality construction, then we're going to use that as an incentive to um, um, reward them, essentially, for doing that. And basically, there are two ways that um, we, could, we would essentially waive the $7,500 PIP fee, where then again it would be coming out of the um, sewer fees. First is if they're willing to reinvest in um, uh, brownfill, brownfield infill type developments. This would be, you know, the um, the drug house down the street from you. If they're willing to um, tear that down or buy it off, renovate it, and turn it into a new um, single family home, then that's the kind of thing that we could um, we we could waive the plan investment fee. Or I guess in this particular case, it would be if they were building a new home there. Um, this helps our existing neighborhoods, and it's something that we should be doing anyways. Obviously, we should look in before we look out in terms of growth. Um, second thing is, um, we, I would be willing to see this fee waived or greatly reduced if, for example, the um, developer would do a quality development. What does this mean? This means that um, it's going to be a sustainable density. Um, it's going to be mixed use in nature. It's not going to be single use. It's not going to be just residential. Um, it's going to be it's going to be mixed income. It's not going to be just for the, uh, we're not going to concentrate wealth or we're not going to concentrate poverty. Um, it's going to be a walkable development. That The idea that every home has to have three automobiles to get everyone around because it's the only way to get around that has got to, got to, got to stop. Um, and then it's going to be quality construction. Um, you know, things like um, vinyl siding and fiberglass insulation um, need to go the way of the uh, of the dodo. It's, um, we, we know that um, stuff just ends up filling up our landfills. The uh, insulation is not terribly efficient. We know there are far better items out there. It costs a little bit more, but in the long run it costs a whole lot less. Four points, um, a completely different system than we have right now. Let's talk about winners and losers in the system that I'm proposing. Uh, winners, uh, the poorest among us in our community that right now are basically subsidizing um, irresponsible um, um, developments, some of which um, are just going to add to our, um, our long-term operating costs in the city and continue to raise taxes. So we tax the poor once up front and we tax the poor even more going forward. I've got a huge problem with that. That's something that needs to be addressed. That's why um, sewer rates are a social concern issue. And um, that's why we need to make the change. A uh, second group of winners, people who live in new areas, because you know what, with the incentives there, one of two things is going to happen. Either the um, costs of um, uh, new homes are going to be $5,000 more, which puts them at a competitive disadvantage with um, other parts of town, or people are going to be knowing that they're going to be getting a quality constructed um, home in a well thought out neighborhood that's not going to serve to continue this process where we um, continue to sprawl beyond our uh, means of paying for it. Um, third group of winners, people who live on, um, on smaller lots. We know that this is a greatly, um, this greatly reduces expenses in the city. I mean, think about it. Um, you know, a fire, a, um, fire department is go or a firehouse is going to cover a certain amount of area. The more homes you have in that area, the cheaper the firehouse is. We need to start, um, acknowledging that, um, smaller lots, um, in the core of the city cost us a lot less as taxpayers or as ratepayers. And we need to be rewarding these people. And I think that in the end, we're going to end up with a much fairer system and a much better city to boot. This is the kind of um, this is the kind of new thinking that we need in the city. Um, we can't continue doing things um, the same way we've always done things just because it's the way we've always done things. What I'm proposing is a fair system. Obviously, this video is short on um, details, but I will be. Um, I'm working very hard right now to fill in the details and fill in actually what those numbers are. But the changes you're going to see are actually quite small. Um, don't don't think that you're going to suddenly see your um, your your sewer uh, rates disappear. Nothing because there are costs associated with that. But the reality is is that the changes need to be made, and um, we need to start acting a little bit more responsibly in this city. And the fact that we would subsidize um, any and every um, project that comes forward to a tune of five thousand dollars a lot is um, it's it's just disgusting to me, and it's something that absolutely has to stop. But you know what? 
um, people who are getting that $5,000 subsidy, they're probably going to very dis very much disagree with what I'm saying. That's why I need you to be involved. If you're a neighborhood organization, a social action group, take this video, pass it around, spread the information, and together we're going to make this change. Otherwise, the same thing's going to continue happening. It's been happening forever. Good luck. Keep in touch.